So I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all have already gone to see Thor Love and Thunder, which is out now. Which you will get a spoiler-free review of this weekend. But for now, here's my re-review of the recent Thor film, Thor Ragnarok. Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews, Excelsior, Nuff Said. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers and true believers out there. Welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name's Dual, better known to you as the Big D. And this time around, I bring to you a re-review of the 2017 superhero flick Thor Ragnarok. Released by Marvel Studios, distributed by Disney. The 17th film in the MCU. The film was directed by Taika Watiti from a screenplay by Eric Pearson and the writing team of Craig Kyle and Christopher Yoss. And of course we have Chris Hemsworth back as the titular character along with Tom Hiddleston as Loki, Idris Elba as Heimdall, and Anthony Hopkins as Odin. Plus, Kate Blanchett, Jeff Goldblum, Tessa Thompson, Carl Urban, and Mark Ruffalo reprised his role as Dr. Banner, a.k.a. the Hulk. And this time, Thorne must escape the alien planet Sakaar in time to save Asgard from Hela and the impending Ragnarok. This film did even better than the first two films. Anyway, I'm going to say this film's just a blast from start to finish. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Now, if you haven't seen my re-reviews for the first two films, I advise you to click on that card, which I made a Thor list. Now, I've, I'm not putting it as redos or anything, so I am, which I'm going to include the Love and Thunder spoiler-free review when I get it up, okay? This weekend, okay? I'll give you a few seconds to click on that, just in case you might have missed those two reviews. Re-reviews, that is, or see them again if you'd like. Okay, that ought to do it. Okay, on with the story. Two years after the Battle of Sokovia, Thor is imprisoned by the fire demon Surtur, who reveals that Thor's father, Odin, is no longer on Asgard. He explains that the realm will soon be destroyed during the prophesied Ragnarok, once Surtur unites his crown with the eternal flame that burns in Odin's vault, Thor frees himself, defeats Surtur, and takes his crown, believing he has prevented Ragnarok. Yeah, just four or five minutes into this movie, and it already starts out being good. Especially when they start playing Led Zeppelin's Immigrant Song. Really something. Okay, back to the story. Thor returns to Asgard to find Heimdall gone and his estranged brother, Loki, posing as Odin. After exposing Loki, Thor forces him to find their father and with directions from Stephen Strange at the Sanctum Sanctorum in New York City, they locate or Odin in Norway. Odin explains that he is dying and Ragnarok is imminent despite Thor's efforts to prevent it, and his passing will free his firstborn child, Hela, from a prison she was sealed in long ago. Hela was the leader of Asgard's armies, conquering the Nine Realms with Odin. But he imprisoned her and wrote her out of history after fearing that she had become too ambitious and powerful. Odin dies as Thor and Loki look on, and Hela appears, destroying Thor's hammer, Mjolnir. She pursues the two as they attempt to flee through the Bifrost Bridge, forcing them out into space. Arriving in Asgard, she defeats its army and kills the Warriors Three. She then resurrects the ancient dead who once fought with her, including her giant wolf Fenris, and appoints the Asgardian Scourge as her executioner. Hela plans to use the Bifrost to expand Asgard's empire, but Heimdall sneaks in takes the sword that controls the Bifrost and begins hiding other Asgardians. Thor crash lands on Sakaar, a garbage planet surrounded by wormholes. A slave trader designated Scrapper 142 subdues him when 
obedience disc and sells him as a gladiator to Sakaar's ruler, the Grandmaster, with whom Loki has already ingratiated himself. Thor recognizes 142 as a Valkyrie, once a legendary, well, one of the legendary force of female warriors who were killed by Hela eons ago. Thor is forced to compete in the Grandmaster's Contest of Champions, facing his old friend, the Hulk. Summoning lightning, Thor gets the upper hand, but the Grandmaster sabotages the fight to ensure Hulk's victory. Still enslaved after the fight, Thor attempts to convince Hulk in 142 to help him save Asgard, but neither is willing. He soon manages to escape the palace and finds the Quinjet that brought the Hulk to Sakaar. Hulk falls Thor to the Quinjet, where a recording on Natasha Romanoff causes him to transform back into Bruce Banner for the first time since Sokovia. The Grandmaster orders 142 and Loki to find Thor and Hulk, but the pair come to blows and Loki forces her to relive the deaths of her Valkyrie companions at the hands of Hela. Deciding to help Thor, she takes Loki captive. Unwilling to be left behind, Loki provides the group with the means to steal one of the Grandmaster's ships. Then they liberate the other gladiators who were incited by two aliens named Korg and Meek to stage a revolution. Loki again attempts to betray his bird, but Thor anticipates this and incapacitates him, leaving him behind where Korg, Meek, and the gladiators soon find him. Now for the final act and ending. You know the procedure. Five seconds of this video. If you've seen the movie, please continue on. Let's do this. Oh yeah, don't forget to go to the description box. Fast forward. You, I think you knew that already. Alright, you've been warned. Thor, Banner, and 142 escape through a wormhole to Asgard, where Hela's forces attack Heimdall and the remaining Asgardians in pursuit of the sword that controls Bifrost. Banner transforms into Hulk again, defeating Fenris, while Thor and 142 fight Hela and her warriors. Loki and the gladiators arrive to rescue the citizens, and the repentant Scourge sacrifices himself to enable their escape. Thor, facing Hela, loses his right eye and then has a vision of Odin that helps him realize only Ragnarok can stop her. He sends Loki to retrieve Surtur's crown and place it in the Eternal Flame. Surtur is reborn and destroys Asgard, killing Hela as the refugees flee. Aboard the Grandmaster spaceship, Thor, now king, reconciles with Loki and decides to take his people to Earth. In the story. But, you guessed it. In a mid cred scene, they are intercepted by a large spacecraft, and then, in a post cred scene, the overthrown Grandmaster is confronted by his former subject. And that's that. Enough said. So what did I think of Thor Ragnarok? Well, what can I say? I love this. I have an even bigger blast from... Well, from e even the fr well being out even the first film. Anyway, the film was really something. Yes, and this film with the Hulk in this. This film allowed elements from the Planet Hulk, two thousand six comic storyline to be adapted into this. And I gotta say, re that's really something. Anyway. The film received praise for its acting and what he's direction. Of course, after this, he'd go on to do some other films like the recent hit Free Guy, as well as the Academy Award nominated Jojo Rabbit, and of course, the, mo the just now released Thor Love and Thunder. Plus, the action sequences, visual effects, and the humor as well, plus the musical score done by Mark Myerspaugh, who most of you know him from the 80s new wave band known as Devo. And of course, he also did music for kids shows like Pee Wee's Playhouse and Rugrats, plus lots of other shows. Anyway, 
and most critics considered it to be the best installment of the Thor films. And what can I say? I got to agree with them. As much as I do like the original, and don't get me wrong, I did like, well, the previous film of the Dark World, considering it was mixed and what have you. But this one just took the cake. Once more, Chris Hemsworth is absolutely great as Thor. Tom Hiddleston, once again, great as Loki. Now, as for Hela, she's played by Kate Blanchett. And what can I say? I was really impressed with this one. Idris Elba returns as Heimdall. Yes, now, I really do like that character as well. Playing the Grandmaster is Jeff Goldblum, who, had, who this character is the brother of the Collector from Guardians of the Galaxy. Kevin Feig expressed interest in seeing the two together in a future film, so we'll see what happens. Tessa Thompson plays Scrapper 142, aka Valkyrie. Yes. Of course, um, after this, she would re-team with Chris Hemsworth for the spin-off Man and Black International. Carl Urban plays Scourge. Now, before I go on to him, I think both him and Tessa Thompson were both very good in their performances and what have you. So, Scourge was a pretty good character as well. Mark Ruffalo returns as Bruce Banner and the Hulk. Of course, I forgot to mention this took place two years after the events of Avengers Age of Ultron. And of course, um, Ragnarok begins an arc for the character that continues the following year in the Avengers Infinity War and Endgame films, which of course in the end says Thor will return in Avengers Infinity War. And Sir Anthony Hopkins once again plays Odin. Yes. Now, of course, we get, well, short appearances by Tanabu Asano, Ray Stevenson, and Zachary Levi as the Warriors 3. Now, now Feek called their appearance as noble ends that serve to establish the threat of Hela and the dangers she poses to the main characters. And Bandit Cumberbatch has a brief cameo as Dr. Stephen Strange. Anyway, yeah. Really something. And um, a brief cameo from Scarlett Johansson as Natasha Romanoff, alias Black Will, through archival footage of Avengers Age of Ultron. Plus, there's a, well, you see a play going with a Thor actor, and it's actually Chris's brother, Luke Hemsworth. Yes. I almost didn't know that was him. Now I see, I'm pretty impressed with that. <laughs> anyway, this film would go on to be a big success for MCU, and it did better than the other two films. The film went on to make $854 million worldwide and became the ninth highest grossing film of 2017. So anyway, yeah, I think that was just so good. Anyway, and now, of course, we will see the God of Thunder back in Love and Thunder, which unfortunately hasn't been getting much as Good response. It's almost coming close to being the, getting the same score on the tomato mirror as the Dark World has. But I'm wishing the best of luck it doesn't lose fresh stats and start round two of, of the film that's going right and what have you. And oh no, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm sorry, I'm getting too far ahead of myself. My bad. But anyway, nevertheless, with a great cast, great story, great action, great visual effects, great humor, and a great musical score and direction, 
Would I recommend Thor Ragnarok? The answer is easily a hell yeah. Definitely look into Thor Ragnarok. Watch this and you will not be disappointed. This is definitely a blast from start to finish. So what are your thoughts on Thor Ragnarok? Please tell me in the comment section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and be a part of the Big D Nation. And stay tuned because I will have the spoiler-free review of Thor Love and Thunder premiere on Sunday, okay? And next time you will get a review of Disney sci-fi classic Tron for its 40th anniversary. And of course you'll get the Pac-Man Saturday morning TV log as well. Anyway, that's, that'll do it. Thanks for watching and if you like this, consider checking out the re-reviews for these other films from Marvel. In the upper left hand corner is my re-review of Spider-Man 2 from 2004. The upper right hand corner is my re-review of Spider-Man 3 from 2007. <coughs> or if you would like um, something else, go to the bottom left hand corner and see my spoiler free review for a recent film that had, well, Taika Watiti, and that would be Free Guy from last year. And the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching, and until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya and Excelsior! Bye now.